Hello everyone. I am Sofia Yelama. I was born and raised in Crete, but now I'm speaking from Cairo as I'm working here in Egypt one year now. Well, I've spent the past few years working on projects on climate adaptation and mitigation, circular economy and nature-based solutions in Crete and now in Egypt. These projects address global sustainability frameworks, standards and initiatives such as the Paris Agreement on Climate Change and the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. These 17 goals were adopted by all UN member states in 2015 and they are a universal call to action to end poverty and hunger, protect our environment and improve our livelihoods. Unfortunately, through my work, what I see is that the current estimates showcase that the world is not on track to achieve these goals by 2030. Well, it is widely known for us that the Mediterranean region is a very vulnerable region to climate change. And what I have not noticed the past 10 years is that in Crete, extreme weather events such as Hurricanes, floods and wildfires have been occurring much more frequently. These are living examples of how climate change affects our island sustainability and prosperity. As for the local economy and major economic sectors such as the agricultural sector, the impact is even bigger. The farmers are confused of what's happening with the weather. They were familiar with the specific methods and practices throughout the four different seasons during the year. Now they have to deal with intense heats in October, for example, that require extra costs and working hands as they have to water their crops twice per day more than before because of the temperature rising. Another example is the unusual phenomenon in Crete of hailstorms that they cause severe damage to our olive trees and vegetables and consequently to the agricultural productivity. A recent example also is last week's floods in Crete that they destroyed everything on their way in just a few hours including the soil and the crops. Well, if you ask me how I see the future throughout the next 10 years if no serious action happens I would say that the situation will become worse. Water availability and soil degradation due to climate change will have a direct impact on the agricultural uh, production and therefore our food security. So what can we do? How can we help the situation and tackle global warming and contribute to climate action. So what I would like to see in the next 10 years is vibrant action, a decade of action including everyone because it's everyone's responsibility in Crete, in Egypt, everywhere. So I would say that for example, talking about food security, well, it requires a multi-dimensional approach. First of all, we need the skills. For example, the agri-food businesses uh, and the farmers, they need to raise their capacity in order to use new technologies and more sustainable agricultural practices and methods. Number two, of course, we need the money. We need investments in rural areas and money for capacity building programs. And number three, and 
it is the most important, I would say, we need the willingness, each and every one of us. From my personal experience, I would say that some best practices or successful stories uh, in Crete or here in Egypt, people are willing if they know, if they have the skills, are willing to contribute to climate action. I have seen here in Egypt an application and SMS, let's say, program that they sent the weather forecasts uh, to the farmers so they will know how to deal with the weather events. Another example that I was really surprised here in Egypt is that the restaurants give us take away the remaining food, either you ask for it or not. Another example that maybe it's not very familiar to people in Crete is that all restaurants, hotels and other businesses working in the food supply chain, they donate the remaining food to the local food bank. So they are trying to fight uh, food waste and save resources. Such examples made me be, let's say, more conscious. And I asked myself questions like, how many people are hungry worldwide? Do you know? Well, when I saw the number, I was shocked. 690 million people are in hunger, especially in areas such as Asia and Africa. And the World Food Program forecasts that if we the current trends continue for the next 10 years, the situation will become worse and we will have an additional number of more than 100 million people more in hunger. Other than that, we can't forget the COVID-19 crisis now that it puts an additional threat to food security. So it goes without saying that a profound change in the food and agricultural systems is needed. Well, have you thought, like, why should you care? If your fridge is full and you're full of supplies at home, why should you care? Because of your families, because of your, your beloved ones. You want a sustainable future for you and for all of them. You want a sustainable future for everyone in this planet. Well, zero hunger will have a direct impact on the economies, which means a better future for everyone. So how can we achieve this? How can we, can we ensure food security? I would say that it requires a multi-dimensional approach because we need the skills, we need the money, and of course, we need the willingness. Let's take the first point. As for the skills, if any of you, investor, regulator, business owner, farmer, is watching this video, it's my personal call to action to think of ways of how to raise the capacity and support our local farmers, not only in Crete and Egypt, but everywhere. We need to support them with capacity building programs so they can use new technologies and innovation and more sustainable practices to tackle climate change, adapt to the current climate risks and mitigate their own footprint. So, how can this happen? 
how can we help through capacity building programs at a local level? Let's say the local authorities in Crete, if they engage with all the stakeholders of the local food supply chain and implement vibrant stakeholder engagement, consultations and capacity building programs per city, let's say, per village. We have beautiful villages in Crete that they secure our food production and our, let's say, heritage from the Cretan cuisine that we have worldwide. So let's say that we have synergies and public and private collaboration to implement capacity building programs. So the farmers will have the skills and the business owners and hotel owners to run their businesses in a more sustainable way. For all of these, of course, we need the money. We need investments. And uh, we see that currently the financial markets globally, they are more concerned on of environmental standards and they invest on green projects and green financing on small and medium enterprises. So that's very good news and uh, people should be more aware of that. There are many financing opportunities to transform your business model into a more and lower carbon business. As for the willingness, this is an individual matter. And I include myself as well. Coming to Egypt here and see the total amount of people in the streets suffering from hunger and the prevalence, daily prevalence of undernourishment made me more conscious as a person, made me, made me understand that I shouldn't throw uh, the remaining food. I should start recycling. I should be more responsible as a consumer and more active as a voter to have my say out loud like now here to you and call to action each and everyone that who is watching this video. So I think that it's everyone's responsibility to work on climate action, to protect our people, to protect our planet and future prosperity. So let's see what we can do and how each and every one of us can help till the next 10 years to see a brighter and more sustainable future here. Thank you for your time and invitation and thank you for all the pioneer work in Crete. Thank you Isa and Sharon Jackson for this initiative. Have a great evening everyone. Bye.